Welcome to session number 199 of Scanner School. 199. Today we're talking about the pros and cons, the differences of a handheld scanner versus a base or a mobile scanner, because bases and mobiles are kind of the same radio. Actually, they are the same radio. So we'll break down some pros, some cons, some things I like about each one, some things I don't like about each one, and to find out if I agree with your thoughts, keep listening to this podcast. But again, if you have something that you would like to add, please do so by going to scannerschool.com slash session 199. That's where the show notes are for this week's session. Or by commenting over on our Twitter, our Instagram, or even our Facebook posts regarding this session. And if you're watching us over on YouTube for this podcast session, leave me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are about handhelds versus base and mobile radios. Today's podcast is sponsored by our two brand new training courses. Our free SDR course, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Software Defined Radio will get you started with SDRs in an afternoon. We will show you what hardware and accessories to buy to get started with Software Defined Radio. Then we'll show you the step-by-step how-to to to install the drivers, tune your first frequency with SDR Sharp, and then have you monitoring digital at the end of this free course. Our advanced course continues with beginner's course left off and levels up your SDR experience. In this course, you'll learn even more about software-defined radio. We will show you how you can substitute an SDR for your high-end digital scanner, how to monitor HD radio, monitor trunk systems and overhead data with Unitrunker, and even how to monitor all the talk groups on a system and never miss a beat with SDR trunk. You can sign up for both courses at courses.scannerschool.com. Before we start this week's podcast, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Patreon is a month-to-month sponsorship platform. We have three different support tiers, each with different benefits. But the most valuable tier is our $5 a month tier. This equates to sponsoring the podcast for about a dollar per episode. Now, not only do our $5 Patreon supporters receive the podcast early, but they also receive a commercial-free version of the podcast delivered directly to their podcast player. Some may say that the included squelchy sticker pack that is mailed to your home is the best benefit of the $5 level, but I think it's the community or the club that is growing at this level. You see, we meet once a month on Zoom, and we have a roundtable discussion about scanning, ask questions, offer advice. Some of the members are answering other people's questions, and we just talk with our fellow scanner school classmates. This is an exclusive group for our $5 Patreon members. Now, again, if all this wasn't enough at that level, you'll also receive discounts to upcoming Scanner School courses and offerings. Now, you can help support Scanner School by going to www.scannerschool.com slash Patreon or www.scannerschool.com slash support. Now, I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters at all levels, and they are Ellen Gonzalez, Arthur Heron, Bill Kay, Brandon Sammons, Brian King, Buzz Gold, Chris Paris, Craig Harper, Dan, Dave Pasco, David C., Danny Crotty, Ed Walsh, Edward Bramlett, Floyd Goff, Glenn Wright, Greg Johnson, Guy Lee, Jack Haycock, Jacques Berry, James Bronson, James Felling, James Peruda, Jay Reed, Jeff Block, Jeff Chapman, Jeff McLeod, Jenny Taylor, Jim B., Jim Heinrich, John Cordoff, John Keel, John Swinney, John Goldenberg, Joshua Robb, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Kevin Zwicky, Lenny Bauer, Les Stevenson, Lynn Smith, Mark Beebe, Mason Kramer, Michael Gorman, Michael Kroger, Nicholas Stenger, Paul Teal, Randy Cummins, Raymond Hill, Robert, Robert Cancel, Ronnie Box, Sal Marandola, Terry Weatherford, Tim Mazza, TJ, Todd Glendi, and William Arcand. Now let's start the podcast. Welcome to The Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. So welcome to Scanner School. This podcast is here to teach you everything you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. Again, my name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. As a reminder, I am always looking for questions, and you can ask your question just by picking up your phone and dialing 516-308-2885 or by using links over at scannerschool.com slash ask to leave me a speak pipe voicemail, or even just send me a message via the plain Jane email systems. So with that, what is going on with the differences, the pros, the cons, what I like, what I dislike about most handheld scanners and their desktop slash mobile counterparts? 
Now, keep in mind here that not every single scanner that is out there has an equivalent to one side or the other. There's also some that are just very unique in their right mind, such as the Home Patrol scanners, right? The Home Patrol 1, the Home Patrol 2. Is it a portable? Is it a desktop? Is it mobile? It's all three. Kind of, I guess, because it does come with a stand for the house, but yet it runs on batteries. But it's too big to fit in your pocket, but you can buy a mobile bracket for it. I don't know. Figure that one out. Another one would be like the uh, Uniden BR330T. That portable came out and there were no other desktop or mobile radios that did anything close to what the 330T did. When I refer to back that, I mean AM reception, low band reception, all the way down through uh, close to DC, I guess you would say on that radio. It went down pretty far. If you want to know more about the Uniden BR330, you can check out session number 179 where we talked about that scanner radio. So let's go ahead and just look at some pros and cons here, right? Some differences, some similarities, and also what I like about them. So we're going to start on this half of the break by looking at handheld radios. When people are just starting to get into the hobby and they say, hey, Phil, this is what I want to go into, my first question to them is really, hey, what's your budget? Where are you looking to use a scanner? Let me recommend to you a handheld scanner because they're kind of like the Swiss Army knives, basically, of the scanner radio market. You can leave them on a desk. You can take them with you. They can go mobile. They can go into a backpack, right? Handhelds are great, especially if you only have one radio and you do expect to take the radio with you. Hey, I'm not knocking buying a desktop scanner for your first scanner. Many people decide to do that because they enjoy desktop radios. I happen to be one of those people, but for the most part, for somebody just getting in who's going to want to have their radio around with them, yeah, that's a great start. Even if you started, say, somebody in your youth into the scanner radio hobby, a handheld is probably the better way to go only because you know how kids kind of get, they get excited, they want to run around the house, but hey, listen to this, right? They want to show you what they're listening to, a handheld radio basically allows them to do that as opposed to them being stuck now in their room or stuck to a particular area of the house that only allows them to monitor in a particular place now that may be something as a parent you may like but i'm just saying when i got my start i only bought handheld radios and my logic at that time was why would i want a desktop why would i want to be tied to a my my bedroom or an office or the basement or whatever it is you're listening to when i could just take the radio with me right so that was that was my mindset So like we said, handheld radios, titles kind of dictate behavior. You take it anywhere, it's portable, can be used basically anywhere, put it on your desk, leave it in the car, throw it in a backpack, take it while traveling. If you can get only one radio, this is it right here. This is the type of radio to get. Another thing to keep in mind here too is that handheld radios can be cheaper than their desktop or mobile counterpart. I'm not saying all of the time. I'm saying can be. And for examples here, we have, say, the Uniden BCD436HP versus the BCD536HP. The 436HP is cheaper than the 536. Same is true on the SDS100 and the SDS200. The SDS100 is cheaper than the SDS200. Yes, there are reasons why, and we will cover those later on. But to get that particular model and style of radio... Yes, the entry point is cheaper. If you don't mind some of the extra bells and whistles that come with the mobile version or the desktop version, then yes, go with the handheld. Another nice thing, though, about the handheld as well is they are smaller and lighter than the base or mobile versions. It's really a night and day difference, right? The desktop versions, they're heavy. They got a giant speaker in them. They got got some bulk (laughs) into them, right? Metal chassis. Handhelds. They're lighter. They, they won't weigh your pants down as much as if you strapped a mobile <laughs> device to your belt, right? But uh, that's what they're made for. They're made to be brought around. So they're made out of plastics as opposed to having a metal frame. So think about that when you're, when you're looking at buying a scanner as well. Now, being portable, these radios all run off of internal batteries. But they can also run off of commercial power star here, a little asterisk, not every scanner, though, can run off of commercial power and be used at the same time. 
such as Unidin's radios that charge off of a USB port. There's not physically enough power off of a computer USB port to actually allow charging of the batteries and using the radio at the same time. So while the radio's on, you're using commercial power. When the radio's off and still plugged in, you're now charging the batteries. This is something here to think about when getting into the handheld environment here. Little things you don't think of. But if you've got those batteries charged and you lose power, you can still use your scanner. If you're going off the grid, you can still have a scanner. If your batteries die, for the most part, if they run on AA batteries, you can just go into your collection of AA batteries, reload, boom, and you're listening to the scanner again. Some exceptions, like the SDS-100 that uses a, a proprietary lithium-ion battery pack, but you can still buy a desktop charger or external charger for that battery pack and have a second one ready to go. Just like when you'd have the uh, the GRE Radio Shack or the Whistler line, right? You'd have the black battery pack and the, or battery um, holder and the yellow one. One would charge, one wouldn't charge. Or you've got radios like the, the Uniden BCD, what was it the BC250D or the, what was the 7960 version of the handheld? The 2960, the other one, right? Those took proprietary battery packs as well. Couldn't charge them outside the scanner. But it was like those cell phone, oh, not the cell phone, but the uh, cordless phones. They had those uh, heat shrunk battery packs with that funny little pin on it, right? That's that's what those scanners used to work off of. So you didn't been trying to get away from the AA market, but again, it's just a better format, right? It's it's, it's easier to get into. When the batteries die, you're not replacing something that's that's very specific. Double A's all over the place. You could run into your local corner drugstore and pick up batteries and be off to the races and listening to your scanner. Aftermarket accessories too, or just standard accessories, are plentiful when it comes to handheld scanners. Leather and nylon cases. Heck, I used to go when uh, the old analog cell phones were the big deal and you get the old Zach Morris cell phones, right? You get uh, Case Logic used to be the company and they used to make these like neoprene cases for for the cell phones to slip into. They were perfect to put in, to be sliding in scanner radios as well. In fact, I may even have some still floating around here. And again, those those were plentiful. You can go anywhere and buy those. You can find leather cases online, such as places like Scanner Master or even eBay has plenty of cases for scanner radios. You can even look at 3D printing a desktop stand or even buying desktop stands now on eBay. There's actually a online 3D printing repository that has free plans, and I've seen plans for plenty of scanners. Whistler, Uniden, Radio Shack scanners, the GRE scanners. Basically, if you want to mount it to a desk, there is an actual plate that you can you can 3D print. Even if you want to mount it in the car, there's something like that as well that you can basically make yourself. And of course, there's plenty of aftermarket antennas, cigarette lighters, power sources, external speakers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for these handheld devices. So now you've got an antenna connection. You've got a data connection. You've got a power connection. You've got all these wires now hanging off of one handheld radio, kind of giving it life support and bigger ears basically, right? Repeat this process on two, three, five, six radios, right? I mean, hey, I'm not knocking handheld radios. I'm just being realistic here when it comes to what you can expect if you have a couple of different radios. Again, everybody's situation is different. Again, we talked a week or so ago about do you even need an outdoor antenna, right? So if you're going to use a handheld radio and you don't need an outdoor antenna, that will definitely save you that as well. But again, don't forget, you definitely need to consider how much more space that radio is going to take up because it may have an antenna attached to it. Now, speakers in handheld radios are small. They are tinny. They're not as loud as a mobile radio. So you may also need now to plug in an external speaker, which also brings up another point. When radios were getting smaller, some of the connectors had to get smaller. So what used to fit as far as a speaker jack may not fit on some other radios as well because of the size difference on those ports. Changing in size ports can also be the antenna connection. You could have a closet or a drawer full of external or aftermarket antennas. All of a sudden, now you go from BNC to SMA, or you go SMA back to BNC. Well, now either you need adapters, or you need to reinvest in other antennas that will fit. And again, if you're like me, the first thing you do when you buy a handheld radio is you buy another aftermarket antenna. 
Well, that's another added expense on top of the radio because now you want to buy a different antenna. So a lot of different things now are coming into play as far as some negatives when it comes to handheld radios. And again, speaking of antennas, let's look at the SDS-100 here, right? The SDS-100, yes, it doesn't have an SMA connector, but it's got the casing actually comes up and over the connector a little bit, and it's recessed inside the chassis now. So you can't just use a standard aftermarket antenna. You either have to put an adapter on, or now you've got to buy something like a Remtronics antenna that actually has that extra threading on there to get into the SMA connector on your SDS-100. Also, handheld radios can get knocked around. They can fall off a desk. They can fall off your belt. They can get knocked around in a backpack. The Many people pick them up by the antennas. When they fall over, they can land straight on the antenna. You can actually put a lot of stress on the antenna port on your handheld radios if you're not careful. So there's a lot to think about as far as, yes, there's benefits when it comes to a handheld radio. There's also cons too, but there's also pros and cons on mobiles slash desktop receivers as well. Now, on the other side of this break, we will talk about those. And for anybody who is a $3 or above Patreon supporter, gets to skip this break, which is great. For everybody else, we'll catch you on the other side of these quick messages. and We'll talk about desktop and mobile scanners. Did you know there are ways to help support the Scanner School podcast that doesn't take any time or any extra money on your part? If you go to scannerschool.com slash support, you will find we have several ways that you can continue to do your online shopping and help support us. We have links to Amazon. If you click on our link before you go to Amazon, anything you buy from there will help support Scanner School. Now, if you're in a market for a brand new scanner, an antenna, other accessories, we have links to Scanner Master, where you can not only purchase a scanner and accessories, but you can also get your radio programmed. And by clicking on our link before you buy, you are helping to support the podcast. Now, if you're in a market for software, we have links to Butel. And if you want something new to you, we also have links to eBay. Again, just go to scannerschool.com slash support before you make your purchases, and you are helping to support Scanner School at no additional cost to you. This session of Scanner School is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies, and we are a Unication, Apollo, and Swiss phone dealer serving the North American market. Now, if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, we can get you a quote at the very best prices. So why does a company like East Coast Pagers support Scanner School? I think that every Scanner Radio user should at least put one pager in their collection of radios. The reason why is very simple. It frees up your scanner to just do scanning, and then you have one radio that's dedicated to your local fire activity. Now, with a pager, you can have voice storage. You can do tone outs. You can keep it silent. You can go back the next day and listen to what you've missed overnight. It's more than you can do with an out-of-the-box scanner. And with today's pagers having multiple frequencies and even having multiple channels in a scan list, like the Unication G1 can do eight channels in a scan list. It has 64 memory channels, and out of the the box, it comes with 11 minutes of stored voice and a desktop charger. The G2s to G5s, they do P25 phase one and phase two in simulcast environments with stored voice, paging on conventional NP25. Oh, and they're upgradable too to DMR type one and type two. They are more rugged than today's consumer based scanners. And with a pager like a Swiss phone S quad, you won't even realize you're wearing one. It'll help keep you informed as to what's going on in your neighborhood. So again, eastcoastpagers.com or contact me directly, phil at eastcoastpagers.com. Do you have a new scanner? You're having problems understanding how it works? Maybe you're new to the entire Home Patrol database of programming and you can't figure out Sentinel. Did you get a new SDR and you're trying to figure out how to install it or you want to learn how to use Unitrunker, DSD+, Plus, maybe set up a Pioware or even just make some changes and you don't understand how the system and the equipment works? The podcast might be great for you, but maybe you need a little bit more of one-on-one help with setting something up. I'm available to do just that with you with our private tutoring sessions. You can book me online by going to scannerschool.com slash consulting for a one-hour session. And it's great because we can actually share computer screens remotely, and I can guide you through step-by-step as if I was sitting right next to you. So again, book me for an hour at scannerschool.com slash consulting for your scanner radio one-on-one tutoring session. 
National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and 2A radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your NatCom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio Magazine, as well as back issues too. So visit natcommag.com to download your free sample issues and sign up today. That's natcommag.com for National Communications Magazine. All right, so let's talk now about mobile base scanners. Let's just call them desktop scanners, all right? I'm getting a little tongue-tied when I say desktop or mobile. They're all the same. So we'll just call them desktop scanners. Or I may just say mobile. I don't know. We'll see how things go. So what are some of the pros now when it comes to buying a desktop scanner? Hey, I feel it's a cleaner installation. All the accessory ports, or I'd say most of the accessory ports, are on the back of the unit. You've got your line out, your recording jack. That's a feature you don't get, a recording jack on a mobile uh, handheld device. You've got... The power connectors could be two different kinds of power connectors depending on the the make and model of your scanner. So even a data connector can be on the back. A GPS connector can all be on the back of the scanner. So when you see the front of the scanner, it could be a nice, clean installation. That's one of the things I do do love about desktop scanners. If you want to keep things nice and neat, these scanners will help you do that. There are some extra bells and whistles, too, that you'll get on these scanners that you don't get on the handheld. For example, on the 436, there's no Wi-Fi. But if you upgraded into the 536, you were able to get a Wi-Fi adapter that plugged into the USB port on the back of the 536 that allows you now to connect that scanner to your home internet connection or even to act as an access point so you can use that scanner direct with software or if you're lucky enough and use Siren, they're your iPhone. Okay, what else? Well, there's Ethernet on the front of the SDS-200. There's no port like that on the SDS-100. Or take a look at the, deta- the, the uh, detachable faceplate on the TRX-2. There's no detachable faceplate on the handheld radio. But that, that kind of defeat the purpose a little bit. So there are some extra bells and whistles that you can get on a desktop scanner. Like I said before, I think they're, they're much cleaner. But you also get larger displays. Case in point, again, the SDS-200 has got a large, wide display on the front of it. You get a lot more information, a lot more feedback on what you're listening to. Even the BCD-536 has a much larger display than the BCD-436. I love using the displays on those scanners, and I do have to cringe a little bit when I go back to the smaller screens on my SDS-100 or my BCD-436. Another pro when it comes to desktop scanners is the fact that they've been using the same plugs on their accessories for over a decade now for the most part. Uniden's got the same size 12-volt barrel connector on their scanners. They've been using for, I don't know, close to eternity now. (laughs) So if you're going to now change out a scanner, look, you just pop off the antenna BNC port, you put it on the new one, you plug in the barrel connector. If you're going to plug in an external speaker... It's all there. It's all the same. It's a plug-and-play swap, a drop-and-swap. Whistler made things a little bit more difficult. They've got this funny little barrel connector with a pin in the middle of it. Even when uh, GRE was doing it, it, when you change scanners, sometimes the actual barrel connector would change sizes. So it wasn't as universal. But in the end, though, there's still a BNC connector. It's still the same speaker jack on the back of it, right? So for the most part, you're okay. The nice thing, too, about desktops and mobile is that they all use 12 volts, whereas your handhelds could use 5 volts. Whether it's USB, could use 6 volts, could use 9 volts. It all depends on how much the scanner needed, and you also had different size barrel connectors. So when you go ahead now and you set up your office space, you can just run, say, a 12-volt power supply and run all of your scanners off of a single power source. You flip one switch, all your scanners turn on. Same as if you mount them in the car. They all run off the same 12-volt source, whether it be your ignition or your battery. So it does make installation a little bit easier. Mobile and desktop scanners both have a larger speaker, which also means it's got a little bit more bass, and it's got definitely some larger audio when it comes to how much volume is 
is coming out of the unit. However, though, a shortfall here is that on unit in scanners, the speakers are bottom mounted. And if you don't lift up the scanner off the desk, you're basically firing the speaker into the desk, which now attenuates the sound. What I don't like about Unidin's new scanners, though, is the fact that they've gotten rid of the kickstand from, say, the 780, the 75, the 796 days, where you just flip the feed forward, and it would kind of tilt the front of the of the scanner up a little bit so you can see it while you're sitting at the desk. No, they want you to reuse the mobile mount, which I can't stand because it's metal. It's not as clean looking, if you ask me. But, again, they're recycling the same pieces that they're kind of cutting back on cost a little bit. I get it. However, I like using rubber feet in the bottom of my scanners when I mount them to a desk. That said, I still give a point in this one for the mobile or the desktop installation. I just like a nice, clean install. You have dedicated buttons, too, and dials for channel up, down, squelch, and volume. Whereas on a handheld version, like the one dial you did in scanners, right? That dial is sharing its function. It's a channel up and down. It is a a dial up and down to go through the menus. It is your volume up and down. It's also your squelch up and down. Okay? And it's even your enter button, too. There's a lot of things that happen off that one little multifunctional dial on a handle because they're competing for resources, right? They don't want to add extra pieces to the top of the scanner because then it makes the scanner bigger. When you've got a mobile version or a desktop version of this, now you've got a you've got a dedicated volume, you've got a dedicated squelch, and you've got a dedicated uh, jog dial, basically. You channel up, channel down, or you can push it in for enter, but it's dedicated. Those three functions all live independently of each other. So again, we talked about the bottom facing speaker. Let's put that in the con category when it comes to uh, these uh, these mobile or desktop scanners. I was kind of trying to stick with all pros and then go into cons, but I kind of blurred the lines here, especially when it comes to the name is mobile slash desktop. Go ahead. We'll, we'll blow the line when it comes to pros and cons anyway. So let's stick, let's try and stick with now the cons of the mobile desktop versions here. So they can cost more. We, we covered that already, right? They can cost $100 or so more than their portable counterparts. But again, you are now getting a little bit of extra for your money, such as the 436 and, and the, uh, I'm sorry, such as the 536 and the SDS 200, where you're getting the ability to have the larger displays. Also, you are getting extra accessories such as an Ethernet port or Wi-Fi included with the scanner. Mobile radios, even though they say they're mobile, they're not so easy to mount in a car. Uh, today's newer cars with their fancy dashboards, eh, it's it's really difficult to find a place to actually mount these scanners. It's not to say they're impossible, but they are not as easy as they used to be when you had cars from the 80s or 70s where you had these square dashboards and everything was all rectangles and sharp lines and you know you'd be able to put something underneath the dashboard and hide it there and everything is all curved and contoured and it's it's a little bit difficult to try and find places for these radios again these radios all require an external power source so that means you need to carry batteries with you if you're going to try and take these portable hey i know people who have taken their mobile radios to the beach they just get a little uh, tiny like Pelican case. They put a 12-volt battery in there, and they put their, their radio right next to them. They wire it up, and boom, they're, they're on the beach or they're camping or whatever else with their radio. And again, if you're into prepping or you want to get off the grid or something like that, again, having a, uh, a small 12-volt battery will power up your other radio. So again, not so easy to take these radios with you. They're not as portable. They do require external source. And again, you can't take them with you unless you have some sort of a power source. But they don't take the same abuse, though. Think about it this way. They don't take the same abuse that your handheld version does, right? When you connect the antenna, the con- your antenna connection is is set. When you plug it in, you've plugged it in, right? You're not going to keep plugging it and unplugging it. Uh, same goes for the speaker as well. So this is kind of more of a set it and forget it type of deal. Plus, they also have usually a, uh, a metal body on them. They don't fall off your desk unless you keep a messy desk and you you keep things stacked up and things should happen to fall, right? Although I know people who have cats and their cats are chewing through uh, electrical cables. Hey, that happens, I guess. Or there's I don't know why they want to do that. But again, those are some things you got to think about too when you've got a desk set up as opposed to something that is portable. So which way do you go? Which way do you prefer? I'd love to hear in the comments section on the YouTube video below which way you would go. Would you go handheld? Or would you go with desktop mobile? Hey, if you're listening to this, go to scanschool.com slash session 199. Leave me a comment there or even leave a comment on our Twitter or our Instagram or our Facebook post. So which way do I go? 
when it comes to this. Well, to be honest with you, I just keep it easy. I just buy them both. And that's not a flex. That's just the disease. When a new scanner comes out, hey, I've got to collect them all. <laughs> it's like to, to rip a line from my daughter's uh, – one of her one of her favorite things is Pokemon now. So uh, she's collecting them. But again, that's just where I am with my scanners. I do like to buy them both because I do like to have them cloned. I keep one at home. I clone it into my, my handheld and I can take them with me. And now I don't have to relearn how the different radio works because I now have them both set up either here or there. So – How did we do today? Let me know in the comment section. And again, if you found some benefit on this podcast episode, all I ask is that you share it with somebody. This is how we make the podcast grow is that we help more people. And again, that is the purpose of Scanner School to teach more people about the scanner radio hobby. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast by clicking on the subscribe button on your favorite podcast player. If you're listening to us over on YouTube, make sure you go ahead and click on subscribe. Hit the bell over there as well. And again, make sure you sign up for our newsletter by going to scannerschool.com. So with that, we're going to say see you all next week when we celebrate episode number 200. Don't miss that podcast episode. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and this is Scanner School, where we teach you everything to know about the scanner radio hobby. 73.